Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, today I am going to be um, walking through how to install VMware uh, vSphere 7.0 um, on a DL uh, 360 um, Generation 9 server. Uh, it's an HP ProLiant server, so I'm going to be walking through that. Um, uh, this vSphere version is actually quite new. Um, as you can see here, it came out uh, uh, April of 2020. Uh, so quite new, and actually this is the first time that I'm going through this installation. So um, you guys are going to have to bear with me. Um, we might go through some errors and whatnot, but we'll, we'll get through the video. Um, so really, I guess we, we can just go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, the first thing that I'm going to start off with is um, really just my... Uh, process of purchasing the server. This is a new server that I just bought. So previously, I actually had a Dell R710, um, which with a vSphere 6.5 installed. Um, but that's one of the older models, and you know I kind of wanted a in another server to have a, a cluster on there, um, but wanted to make sure that I get one of the newer versions of, of, of v, vSphere. Um, so really, just you know, starting off doing some research. Um, the first thing that you probably want to do is to um, you know make sure that the server that you're looking to purchase is supported. Um, so there are you know you can visit the um, like the Dell website or the HP website where they have the compatibility matrix that you can make sure that you know the version or the server that you're trying to buy is supported by the version of EXXI or vSphere that you're trying to install. Um, so for me, I was looking for either 6.7 or um, 7.0. Um, so you know, you know, looking at the matrix, you know, you, you need a generation nine or generation ten for the HP servers. Um, so that's kind of what I was focused on. So um, you know, and that brings us to this um, website, Lab Gopher, and I just found this just by um, researching and Google around. But I, I think it's a pretty cool site where you can um, you know use this to you know search for servers that you need on eBay. Um, you know. I don't know who created this, but I, I like it so much. So I'm going to link this in the um, the video description. So feel free to check this site out. Um, and you know, basically, you just you can filter by HP or Dell, whichever one, and then find the server that you're looking for. For me, like I said, looking for Generation Nine to Ten. So this is where I came for DL three uh, three sixty Generation Nine, um, and it will give you. I'm kind of list out a pull from eBay and kind of list out all the uh, the servers that are being sold right now, um, and you can kind of just click on this and it will take you to eBay, where you can you know and this is actually one of the ones that I bought um, where you can bid on this or or buy now whatever the case may be. So um, again, once once you get your server, um, for the most part, you you may need to buy your your, your uh, the hard drive buy additional hard drive as, as you need um, as well as some power supplies and, and things like that but overall I think this is good value um, so this is one of the ones that I purchased and, and one that I, I'm planning on putting in my home lab so um, yeah so uh, go ahead and check this this, this site out um, purchase your server if you don't already have one chances are if you're um, watching this video you already have your server and you're just looking for instructions on how to um, set up your ESX size so uh, we'll go ahead and just you know skip right past this and get right into it um, you know once you have your server um, next thing that you want to do is to um, install your ESXi on a bootable flash drive um, so um, you want to make sure that you have your image so it might be pretty costly um, there are different ways that you can get it for, for a low price um, that's wouldn't go into that but to just make sure that you have your image um, your 7.0 image and you also want to make sure that uh, you also want to download this tool uh, Rufus um, it's going to help us create that bootable flash drive to use and, and do the installation um, uh, I already have I believe the latest version is uh, 3.14 or something like that I have a 3.11 version so um, just gonna spell that correctly Rufus um, I don't have my flash drive added yet give me one second let me add that in so 
So once you have your flash drive added, and I actually already went through the process and made my flash drive bootable, which is why it's showing up as that name. But um, you want to have your flash drive added, and that will be the device here. Uh, you want to go ahead and select the image. Um, for me, it's the this is my image and pretty much everything else should be left default as you can see this is the volume name that you want to is going to rename your flash drive to um, and that's why it's showing that because I already did that previously so um, once you get this um, you're just going to hit, hit start I'm not going to do that here because I already have it and I don't want to do that twice um, so you just go ahead and hit start it should take about you know two to three minutes to get your flash drive to be bootable and add that image onto your flash drive um, but that's basically how to use Rufus not not too bad um, once you get that image on your flash drive um, the next thing that you do want to do is to um, take your flash drive and add your flash drive to your server right. I'm gonna I'll go ahead and do that right now Okay, flash drive is added to the server and flash drive contains the image um, for VMware ESXi 7.0. Um, and also, also another thing that you probably need to do, uh, again, if you have, if you, you can easily just connect to your server if you want to get um, visual as to what the upgrade process, you can connect to your server using um, a VGA cable or whatnot, but I like to use uh, the ILO uh, manager. Uh, which is this portal here or this manage you know, this interface so the way to do that is um, on the back of your server there is a port that is labeled ILO um, so you would just take an Ethernet cable um, or RJ45 cable and you would connect that Ethernet um, to you know one end of the Ethernet to your server and the other end to your network device be that your router um, switch firewall whatever the case may be um, and make sure that that you know you get an IP address that's assigned to that um, I have a unify uh, switch or a unify network um, so you know once I got that connected um, I could see you know it tells me this is an ILO um, server that's connected and it gives me the IP address for that so this is the IP address that I use um, once you get that connected um, once I, and I get you, and you get your DHCP to assign you an IP address. You would just connect to that with your browser on HTTP, um, and th that would bring you to this portal, right? Um, but obviously, you would need to authenticate to this, so it would just bring you to a screen such as this, um, and then you would just simply need to log in on your server. There is a sticker that has the. Uh, Username and password, or the default username and password. Um, in my case, is an admin. I didn't spell that right. Administrator, and then my password. Just go ahead and put in your password. And that should authenticate you and bring you into this screen um, that we see here. Um, also, um, forgot to mention that if you haven't already set up your uh, your RAID, uh, you want to make sure that you do have some hard drives installed on your server uh, because that's where um, your ESXi image is going to be installed on. Um, I, I know you can also install it on, on a flash drive or a bootable media. Um, you can do that as well, but I like to install it on um, the the physical hard drive uh, inside of the server once I have my RAID set up. I'm not going to go into details on how to set up RAID, but I'm going to link this link to this site which essentially I use to set up um, my RAID. Um, I, I went with RAID uh, 1 on here um, just so I can have that redundancy, but and I have two hard drives set up. I have two one terabyte hard drives, so a total of two, so I set up uh, RAID 1 on there. Uh, so I can have some redundancy. Um, so I'll link to this site. You can visit that if you want to set up your rate as well, but you want to make sure you go ahead and do that before jumping in um, to this tutorial. Um, and then once we're in here, um, we have our 
ESXi image connected to the server or the flash drive connected to the server um, what we want to do then is to boot up the server um, to be able to you know begin the installation of that ESXi image um, so to do that is um, you come to power management uh, server power and then we see right now we're currently powered off so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this momentary pr uh, press you can set whatever um, auto power option I'm not gonna do that right now so I'm just gonna momentarily press this um, and you should hear some sound or, uh, or airplane taking off in the background okay and my server is now on um, so one thing one thing cool about this ILO is we are able to then connect you know kind of get a visual as to the installation process uh, so we're not completely blind to that process so a couple of ways that you can do that on here um, I know with this over in, in this overview tab we can either select one of this integrated remote console uh, but you can also come to this remote console um, tab and then you have three options the .NET integrated remote console um, Java integrated remote console and the HP ILO mobile application uh, so whichever one you want to use that's up to you I would like to use this uh, Java integrated remote console just because I have Java on my laptop and it seems like it's the much easier way to go um, just want to go ahead and click on that, um, that NLP file once it's generated um, and then accept the risk really isn't any there and then continue Okay. So while our server boots up, we're just going ahead and give it a couple of minutes to um, boot up and you know get ready for our installation process. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I will be right back. Okay, so our server is now booted up, and uh, our image is recognized, and the installation file has already been executed. So uh, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and install. Um, the XXI 7.0 on this server. Uh, just press enter. Um, control F11 to accept that. You can read it if you want. Um, and then it's going to scan for available devices. Um, so in this case, it found the flash drive. It also found the uh, two terabyte um, hard drive that was installed uh, or RAID drive that was installed. Okay, so um, we have our hard drive registered. Um, so we're going to want to just go ahead and press enter to begin the installation on there. Uh, keyboard layout, we will do US defaults. Um, and then set a root password. Uh, yes, please. Partition. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video while my we're done and installation is complete. It's gonna ask you to remove the installation media, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And then you want to reboot the server um, to start ESXi. So I'm gonna press Enter to reboot. Um, and we'll, I'm going to pause the video again and allow it to reboot and I'll be right back to kind of show you the progress okay so once our installation is complete um, we can pretty much see now that we have an IP address um, we can go ahead and actually and to actually get an IP address you would need to so besides connecting to the ILO port on the back of your server you also need to connect another Ethernet um, cable to um, to the first port besides the ILO. Um, now that will connect to the network, and this will give you that management port where you can then connect. You know, you know, if you, if connected correctly, you will get another DHCP IP assigned to it. Um, you know, so my ILO is 33, and my management is 34. Um, so you know, pretty much just want to browse through this, and then just confirm that installation is um, working as expected. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, 34. Okay, so we get prompt and it looks like this works. So go ahead and put in um, 
a username and password, the same password that you created um, during setup, and then we should be able to log in. Mm. Incorrect. Oh, I think this is root, and then with the same password. Perfect. Yep. So, looks like our installation is successful. Um, we have 7.0 installed. Um, so yeah, every, everything works as expected. So you may have noticed I was pausing the video for you know pretty often. Um, so the explanation of that is this error that I keep getting where it's um, the ILO is not licensed to the, uh, to use the integrated remote you know console after server post is complete. So I did a little bit of research here, and it looks like well, apparently the um, the ILO management needs to be licensed to, to for us to continue to use it. It only allows it to be used um, for the initial setup or the initial boot of the server. Um, but any other configuration, you know, such as installing VMware, um, you're going to need to have to have a license um, for the ILO. Um, I know, you know, I, I actually you know went ahead and requested a free there there's a free trial I went ahead and requested that just so I can um, you know have something to use in, in the meantime but again not really as important I have my setup and I've already installed the SXI so not really um, any reason for me to use this at this point but eventually you know for just in general you want to continue to manage your server using the ILO um, I would recommend getting this license um, and kind of managing it that way so otherwise yeah so you know kept getting this error and it will allow you for the, the first minute or so but then it would generate um, this error so you have to close this and then regenerate another um, remote session for you to be able to uh, where is it you would need to generate another remote session for it to be able to work and then you have another minute or so to uh, to use that so um, that was the issue that um, that was that was going on and I had to continue to pause the video and whatnot but um, again that this is the first time that I'm setting this up I, I knew there was going to be some errors but I, I think we overall we did good and um, got this set up like you should, like you can see we have um, SXI 7.0 installed so yep so on the next video I'm gonna you know in this video I'm not gonna go you know go through any more details with the features I haven't really played around with it yet so I'm gonna spend some time playing around with the features setting up my network and, and things like that and you know getting uh, this to be managed by my vCenter um, that I already have set up so uh, once I do have all of that set up I may make another video just kinda of showing my progress and um, pretty much how to um, Go ahead, go ahead and set up some additional features um, in the future. But for now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and end this video here. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, just feel free to leave a comment, um, like, subscribe, and um, just shoot me a question if you have any uh, any concerns or questions that, that you want me to address, and I'll do my best to answer. So um, appreciate you all uh, watching this tutorial, and uh, I'll catch you all later. Thanks.